Hey everyone, how are y'all doing? Uh, this is me again with another unboxing after Christmas. Well, this Christmas gift is a Christmas to me because I bought it, pre-ordered it in September, and my hobby shop called me yesterday and said it's in. Went to go pick it up, and then there she was. So, without further ado, we're going to review, unbox, the Union Pacific SD70AH Spirit Locomotive. Alright. So basically, unbox this. Uh, since this locomotive is like wasn't a limited limited edition, this engine, the way that it's designed, you know, you got the five color schemes of the of the land and sea forces of the United States military. So I love it that Atherin created its own custom box, which I think is pretty cool. All right, so we're going ahead and get this thing out of its box. Set that over there. And of course, standard documentation. You got some looks to be warranty info. Sign up for Atherin News newsletter. It's free. I'd sign up. I did. Split a parts diagram. And then, of course, you got your pamphlet manual, which I love this manual. It's very easy. And then you got everything from handling and maintenance, DC and sound if you're running it on analog. And then for us guys that have DCC systems, there's your functions. And then it's got different uh, sound variations, different engine categories. And then you got all your air horn selections. And I believe, ah, uh, there's the one that's going to give most people the headache, is the CV values. Look at all those CV values. Guy like me, though, since uh, most of you guys, if you know what I do, uh, DCC installs and LED upgrades, eh, doesn't, doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I have JMRI, so I'm kind of cheating. Oh, well. So, basic troubleshooting and just, again, warranty information. All that wonderful stuff, and I don't think... Oh, and then a back page for notes. And I thought they would have included realistic pictures like they would in other locomotives, but that's alright. Uh, Genesis warranty card. I already filled it out, so I'm not going to open it. Now. Why is it... Okay. Now let's right set up. I'm going to go ahead and just stop in here. We'll do a transition. Get it out of its box. Okay. Just got it out of its box there. So now we're gonna take the sleeve off. Set that over to the side with the box. And you pull on one of these ends. And that of course lifts it up. There's the engine. One more thing to note that I found in the package is I don't know what these detail parts are. If you could see them that well. That is if my camera will oh maybe oop. Oh. Anyways, I think they're just some extra uh detail parts. I think these are like brake lines or something. I don't know. Yeah, moving on. Okay. The engine and you take off the foam to reveal it so we can look at it. And I tell you what, from all the other reviews, this locomotive is just, it, I can't believe it. This is the most beautiful locomotive I've ever owned. So, all right, now let's go over it up close and see what details are on it. All right, everyone, so basically I'm going to go over a few details of this locomotive, okay? Starting with the front here. You got some nicely uh, glued in grab irons. You've got uh, wipers and a nice cab interior. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's there. PTC antenna uh, specific to Union Pacific. MU hoses, snow plow, 
uh, ditch lights, and then got more grab irons over here on the right. So moving right along, a lot of the roof detail is phenomenal. You got your dynamic brake fans, your exhaust fans, horn. Then you got fuel tank detail, which I think is just extremely cool. Then the trucks, I believe you got the sand lines right here, and you got the brake cylinders. Uh, the roller bearing caps, I don't think they roll, they might, but that's probably in the future for Atherton. I haven't found any flaws with this model, and right now, like I said, I can't find anything wrong, which I hope not that nothing is wrong. But we'll get to that when we operate it and listen to the sounds of this gorgeous engine. So I'll tell you what, that's what we're going to do right now. So stay tuned. Alright, so now let's get to the operation of this locomotive. Gonna power on my track. Alright, I actually changed around the CVs a bit. Um, just so I can have it operate the way I want it to. I typically program the CVs first. I know I should probably just take out of the box, review the stock sounds, but to me, I feel like it's just necessary to change the CVs. And okay, let's get to the operation of this thing. I'm gonna pull up my have my Y throttle all set up. Did track L and Y. Going ahead, start up, start it up. You hear the bell, the alarm bell in the engine room. I don't know if you can clearly see. Move this back some. Alright, so F0 is the headlight, F1 bell. F2 is Longhorn, and it's a momentary, so you just hold it down for however, however long you want, and that's when the horn will blast. 3 is short horn. 4 is dynamic brake. F5 is the ditch lights. Which, yeah, you can see it now illuminated. And uh, they put LEDs in this model, which I'm very excited about. Because I know a lot of people fussed over incandescence that they didn't change over soon enough. But I contacted Atherton and uh, a employee got back to me to say that they just wanted to get rid of all their extra supply of incandescent bulbs. They still got some on parts order, but they wanted to get major all of it for factory installed locomotives out so that they can make room for the LEDs. All right. Uh, other functions, F8 is mute, F7 I believe is a dimmer, I don't know if that's occurring, it goes up to functions 28 but I'm not going to cover all of them, so let's just see how this thing runs, alright, I'm up at speed step 10, and it's going real smooth, oh, that's just my track work, not the truck. Alright, here we go. Go ahead and idle it. Reverse. Go ahead and back her up here. I'm on speed step 10 and it's rolling real smooth. You might hear the gears and such grinding. That's because I haven't broken it in yet. So 
So that's just pretty much a quick uh, general overview of how it runs, some of the sound functions by default. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I am, again, excited to get the Spirit Engine. I'm now going to leave you with a couple run-bys, run around the layout, and maybe at another guy's layout, which I'll be posting probably within the next week. So, as always, guys, take care, and hope you have a wonderful start to 2019. Okay, I forgot one more thing. Uh, since I'm a DCC guy and I like to know what's inside and what's in a factory installed model, I'm going to show you guys real quick, take apart the shell, and give you just a little two minute uh, overview of what's inside the locomotive DCC sound wise. If you get the DCC ready, it's just a standard motherboard with the 21 pin adapter. As I'm starting to kick out off the 9 and 8 pin plugs for the 21 because then 21 pin is just a universal decoder. You can pop it in every locomotive that you want. As long as it's got the 21 pins, you take your 21 pin decoder, you pop it in this locomotive. If you want to go to this other locomotive later on, you pop it in. There's no figuring out, well, does this have an 8 or 9 pin? Or Once everything, I think, in the next several years, everything's going to go 21 pin. And basically, that's just going to be the one decoder that'll fit any locomotive that you put it in. So... I'll tell you what though, let me just take the shell off and uh, then show you the inside of this engine right now. This particular engine has four screws, two that hold the shell on and then the front and rear coupler pockets. So it's just a matter of just locating them and taking a small Phillips head screwdriver and getting them loose okay so here you just see my camera zoomed in a little bit to show you the decoder sorry about that the decoder that's in here so obviously you got your headlight wires, and as you can see, they're no longer black. They're red and black for a reason. Red is your positive connection, and that's your volt common. And then the black is your negative output. That's where you put, on a standard LED, you would put a resistor, but this decoder is already pre-built to run LEDs. So this decoder is made by Soundtracks, and it was manufactured on September 7th, 2018. I think that's when they had the second release. They were building the decoders. Um, this typically, you might think, okay, it looks like the old GN1000, but of course it's not. It's a new Tsunami 2. They refer to it. I put it on my JMRI test track, and it showed GNTSU22, or GN, I'm sorry, GN2200 under soundtracks. So those of you that if you remember Tsunami 1's, the GN1000 was a decoder made specifically fit Athen Genesis models. It can go into other models that you could fit it into. Uh, because of Genesis models, you got these two motor clips that you can clip your decoder right in and it stays. So you got typical outputs, but what, what, hit, what there is, there's actually eight lighting effects. I don't know why, it's just they did it that way. So, your truck pickups here are only here and here, but that's for both front and back. The ones up here and here are F7, which is back here, and F8, which can be lighting effects. That's what, they're, that's what those wires are going to be wired into stock if you don't take the shell off and change them. I swapped the two uh, ditch light wires, the negative where the resistors would be, onto the F5 function because I like my ditch lights on F5. So you got a volt common right here. You got function F6, F5, F4, F3. And then like I said, it goes 7 and 8. And then over here on the back side, you got your motor positive and negative and then your speaker positive and negative. And they have a 28 millimeter 1 inch round speaker that's only held on by two screws. Um, I honestly put a gasket on it, so if you were tired of the sound vibrating, 
do you need to put a gasket or it's your volume that's too loud, which of course I put on my computer and it was three quarters turned the way up for the master volume. And then again, like I said, I went back and changed some CVs of volume wise to get that locomotive turned down so it wouldn't be extremely loud and then my family would be like, what the heck's all that racket? So, anyways. Um, the LEDs, uh, the new LEDs, I don't know, I can't really show you because I don't want to take it all apart, but the new LEDs, they just pop right in. They're the same size as the incandescent bulbs. All it is is a bulb, LED bulb, and you got two pads for positive and negative connection. So, like I said before, I'm now going to leave you guys with a couple run of this engine running on my layout. I thank you again for watching another video. And uh, like I said, I think in the last part, I hope you have a great start to 2019. 2018 was a great year, but let's make 2019 a better one. Take care, guys.